Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge some people who are standing up here with me. Uh, Investigative Lieutenant Mark Coratola from the Nassau County Correctional Center. Investigative Corporal uh, Robert Pierce, also from the Nassau County Correctional Center. My Chief of Public Corruptions, uh, Kristen Fexis, and my Assistant District Attorneys, Michael Davidman and Ryan Bowman. I'm sorry. Benomi, yeah. Benomi. <laughs> Um, and uh, my detective investigators. We're here today announcing the indictment of Yasmin Talbot, a former nurse manager at the Nassau County Correctional Center in East Meadow. Talbot became the second highest ranking nurse at the Nassau County Correctional Center. And as a result, she wielded substantial power and had substantial access to information at the Correctional Center. Our investigation began when we realized that she was abusing that power that she had. There were over 400 phone calls to her from inmates at the Nassau County Correctional Center, most of them from her co-defendant, Christopher Wright. During some of those phone conversations, which of course are recorded, it became clear that she was involved in a conspiracy to provide contraband to Christopher Wright. One item which Talbot is alleged to have conspired and smuggled into the correctional center to give him was a ceramic blade which is undetectable by the magnetometers at the jail. This is what the blade looks like. It is sharp, it is dangerous, and it can cause a lot of damage when used. It is alleged that she had this, this blade mailed to her home and then brought it into the jail complex and handed it to Wright when he complained of chest pains and was taken to the medical facility where she was the nurse in charge. <clears throat> in addition, it is alleged that Talbot provided confidential information from the jail about other prisoners' whereabouts to her co-defendant, Christopher Wright. It was during a body scan that inmate Wright was found with two balloons, one of them which contained this blade. There was also evidence that Talbert provided money to Wright's commissary. And of course, all such actions are strictly prohibited by the rules at the Correctional Center. These acts threatened to destabilize entire buildings at the Correctional Center. It put the lives of jail staff, her own nursing staff, and other inmates at risk. And that is unacceptable. She's a person who is a public official in power, and to use that power to put others in danger, her own staff, the jail staff, and other inmates, is unfathomable. She was suspended early in our investigation and resigned on September 22nd in lieu of her termination. Senior employees like Talbot are tasked with keeping order in the jail and to abuse that trust that her position afforded is to do nothing more than make us all a little less safe. Today, she's facing her accountability. I want to thank the Nassau County Sheriff's Office who worked alongside us throughout this investigation and led to today's indictment. Their partnership on this case was invaluable. Does anyone have any questions? How long was uh, she receiving these phone calls? What was the time frame of the 400 calls? Uh, it was January of 2023 through September of 2023. And you said that she was mostly speaking to Mr. Wright. Was she talking to other inmates? Yes. What, what was going on there? We haven't. It's still an ongoing investigation into those calls, but we haven't found anything um, like this in those calls yet. 
Was there an intimate relationship between her and Mr. Wright? There was definitely a relationship that started prior to him being incarcerated, but I don't want to speculate on what it was, just that they knew each other and um, had been in touch with each other. And just so I make sure I have my facts straight, he, I guess this whole investigation more so kicked off after the blade was found on him, so did he pretty much say, I got it from no, so what happened was when we found the blade, he refused to cooperate with us, and that's when um, the investigation into his phone calls began, which led us to her and her involvement in it. And you said it was found in a balloon and a body scan, so he literally had it in a body cavity? Yes. And he has a number of convictions. Can you characterize what his convictions are for and what um, he has a number of felonies and a number of misdemeanors. Were they uh, violent crimes, drug-related? No violence. Uh -huh. Any other indication that she was supplying any other uh, items to inmates? Not at this time. As far as we know, was the knife ever used in the jail? As far as we know, no. What was the knife for, do you know? Uh, in his conversations with her, he alleged he needed it for protection, but... Anybody who has a weapon in the jail. So, I'm sorry, um, she gave him the knife after the medical visit and then he was scanned before he went back to the... No, he was scanned a couple of weeks later. The medical visit was in February. He was scanned in March when it was discovered. Is he a member of a gang or any uh, no affiliation? Not that we know of. Why was he scanned? Why? Just periodic random scans? <clears throat> Transportation. Transportation. So they were getting ready to move him somewhere, so they have to be scanned before they're moved. So it's believed he had it for a whole month. Is that the case? Yes. So there's uh, safety measures they can do for ceramics to try and kind of filter that out? You know, unfortunately, the equipment that we have at the correctional center just doesn't pick up on the ceramics. It picks up, of course, on metal and things like that, but the ceramic can get through. Um, you know, Maybe we have to go to the manufacturers and ask them to make better. Uh... <laughs> How long uh, was Yasmin working at the jail? I believe since... Almost 10 years, right? Yes, 10 years. She started at Nassau University Medical Center as an emergency room nurse and then moved over to the correctional center. One more? Yeah. Uh, so these relationships, uh, illegal relationships, I guess, between nurses correction officers, inmates. This happens. Um, this isn't the first time, probably won't be the last. How do you combat that? What, what is your team do um, to stop this or prevent this from happening in the future? So there's really nothing we can do about people meeting each other, right? You work at the jail, an inmate comes in because he's sick, you meet. But what we can do, and we do, is stay on top of the phone calls, the outside influences that may come from someone who's employed by the jail being involved with an inmate. Is there any comment from the uh, Sheriff's Department? Just want to thank uh, Mr. Attorney Donnelly and her team in public corruption. They worked uh, tirelessly with my unit in internal affairs to bring this case to a close. I also want to thank uh, Sheriff LaRock and Commissioner Hartung. They've been uh, steadfast in support of my unit's mission in rooting out corruption with the jail. Thank you. How big of a problem is contraband in the facility? Yeah, sure. <laughs> contraband is a, it's an ongoing issue that uh, we try to prevent the jail, not just internal affairs, criminal investigation, unit, gang unit, security staff. So how, how devastating is it when someone within the jail is helping to facilitate it? It betrays the public trust and it circumvents our measures in uh, stopping contraband from coming in. That's a very sharp blade that could have caused a lot of damage. To an individual. I'm uh, Lieutenant Curatolo, the Sheriff's Department. C U R A T O L O. Mark, M A R K. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, everyone.